Right, we are recording. Finn, stop kissing the guests! Fine. Ow! Oh! I'm worried he's gonna knock all this everywhere. Yeah. That guy. I can't wait to interview him. <laughs> so, what are your aspirations in life? Ah. Welcome to the studio. Welcome to the studio. The rent on this place is a mortgage. <laughs> Come on, dog. Relax now. Come here. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Car Mugs. Car Mugs. Car Mugs podcast. Today, I am joined by. Paul Wallace, One AKA <laughs> Supercars of London. Hello. Welcome. Thank, thank you, you, dude. Copy your handshake. Thank you very much for coming down, no, man. Thank you. I'm going to have to sit cross legged like a child. <sighs> That's fine. So That's I've structured good. out the podcast a little bit today with questions for yourself. Um, we haven't done any like questions from people, which we might be able to just go live yeah. for at the end real Sounds quick good. and see if we can get something. Um, yeah. But I've got quite a lot of stuff to get through. Okay. Um, because obviously you're a big YouTuber. I'm a small YouTuber. So I want to. We're both YouTubers. Yeah, both YouTubers. I want to get your advice and how anybody else starting out, so maybe they yeah. can do it and all that sort of stuff Wicked. and uh, see how life as a big YouTuber is, <laughs> big successful stop YouTuber. That, stop so, <laughs> who are you? Please introduce uh, yourself, okay. show the camera, so if, in case anybody out there doesn't know who yeah. you are, then all right. the floor is yours. Finn, stop licking your willy, man. <laughs> oh, he's just been licking my face as well. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good boy. My name is Paul Wallace. Um, I run a YouTube channel called Supercars of London, which is primarily based in the UK, but in recent years, it's taken me to all sorts of corners of the earth, which has been pretty amazing, really. Um, I come from Watford in Hertfordshire, so anyone from around there, what's up? Uh, <laughs> however, I spend a lot of time in Essex as well, so it feels like my second home in a way. The best county. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, over the last 10 years, which makes me feel very old, I've been mainly filming supercars, but lover of all cars and now have decided that I want to get into the drift world. I want to get into the drift community. Um, so experiencing that today was a lot of fun. Although a uh, small... Only just, a little bit. Yeah. Just, we couldn't really find anywhere to do anything, so I just did a couple of little skids, but... It wasn't you though, was it? Rick. Yeah. That bastard. I, yeah, I met him today. <laughs> what a crazy guy. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I thought it'd be... I think, I'm really appreciative of you coming down, mm. man, genuinely. Um, I really hope we can get a good insight in yourself. And, yeah. Um, and what your obviously future plans are with the drifting. Yeah. Um, Sorry. But we just had a lovely lunch, by the way. We did. It was lovely. We did. It was, was a lovely Just Italian. missing a candlelight and then it was that romantic. <laughs> so, um, right, we're on a car podcast. So, yep. what cars have you owned, please? Start off with the, Okay. Where did it all start out for you? Before the YouTube and all that, like, where did it start? It started out? with me uh, owning, well, not owning, no, I just used my mum's car. So, I used to pay for the additional excess on my mum's insurance, which was a 2004 Ford Focus, which he still has now. Oh, wow. um, and it's, yeah, it's had a pretty tough life, safe <laughs> to say. Uh, that was the first car that I really learned the basics of driving and started to drive by myself in. And when I was 21, I bought a 2007 Vauxhall Astra SXI, which was a dream car of mine. It was a three door. So it was a super sleek car that literally when Vauxhall were like, here's the concept of a car that we want to build. And then they actually built it looking like that. Yeah, yeah. It was such a good looking car. It had a sport button that stiffened up the throttle and the suspension. And it was amazing. And I, go on. Need to make sure I put the microphone on. Oh. This is something I do every single time. <laughs> is it on? Oh, it's on. <laughs> it's on. Thank goodness. I literally had that cold chill run yeah. through my body. There'll probably be a seed on the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. Just your face getting white, jaw yeah. white as I carry on no. talking. <laughs> Last time I did it in the podcast, and it was about 45 minutes in, I went, uh, oh. can I just check that the sound's yeah. on? It was okay, though. Yeah, there were a lot of technical errors <laughs> in, in YouTubing. Um, but I think the most satisfaction that I got out of that car was the fact that it was better than my older brother's car. Okay. Because he had a Skoda Fabia. Okay. And uh, mine was better, it was faster, he enjoyed riding in it, in, even in the passenger seat, more than he did driving his own car. And then from there, it uh, started to go a little bit weird, and I went from an Astra to an R8. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of just leapfrogging all the, the next yeah, step cars. Yeah, uh, manual V8, incredible car, and I documented that on my YouTube channel as my first supercar, and it was a series that I did that... I thoroughly loved and I basically experienced a bunch of different cars from the passenger seat, having not driven any of them, and then ended up buying an R8, which just totally, totally mental. And the best thing about that car, which I owned for 15 months, was it didn't lose any money. But it earned me money from the YouTube videos. 
Yeah. Um, so when I sold it, I managed to get a better amount of money together and bought a Lamborghini Gallardo. And then this is probably the moment when everyone's like, that guy's a douchebag. Because <laughs> <laughs> I... Was your, it was the Lamborghini Dream Series. I it was. Watching it it was, yeah. Um, I was very jealous. I remember sitting there going, fuck, I wish just... I was living a Lamborghini Dream. It was, it was honestly so surreal and I have to look back on like, I've got five videos that I look back on from that car just to really remember it because it was such a blur. Um, and it was... <laughs> yeah, it was just it was just surreal. Um, but I just the one thing that I like cringe at is saying the word Lamborghini. Like I love that car; it's my favourite brand. But when someone's like, "Oh, what car do you drive?" I always used to say, like, either oh, I drive a Ford because sometimes I used to drive my mum's car. Right. Yeah. And I'd always hide the fact that that was the car that I had because I just knew everyone in their head was just going right. <laughs> um, and so after that, I bought a Mercedes AMG GTS. Moved on from that, which I thoroughly loved, and got super lucky with that car as well because I didn't lose any money on that. Which enabled me to buy a Hurricane, mm. which was an amazing car. I really wanted to own that for a two year period. I wanted to put like 30, 40,000 miles on it and drive it everywhere and, and document like traveling, but from a Lamborghini, which I just don't <laughs> feel like has been done on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but I sold that because I wanted to buy a property and be a bit sensible. I think it's a good shout. Grow up a bit. Um, I think it's the sense. That's what I did. I mean, I never had the wildly luxurious cars like mm. Lamborghinis, but I had a BMW. They're not luxurious. <laughs> you know what I mean? The prestige of the yeah, badge. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I had an, an Albima. I'm not old. Mm. It was like a 2011, and I sold that for my deposit on that. On yeah, my first house, yeah. basically. So. Um, and now you're in this incredible space, mm. um, which I'm very jealous of. It's lovely, it's man. So like, nice. It is lovely. So nice. I'm very, very lucky to be in this for yeah. sure. Um, um, and you've got now, you've got the, C you had an M3 3. as well, didn't you? Yeah, I did have an M3, uh, which was my first, well, it was my second dip into like proper rear wheel drive cars, because the AMG GTS was rear wheel drive, but like it scared the hell out of me, that car. But the M3 just felt a little bit more manageable, and the, and the power was a lot more accessible, that I, I learned the balance of that car a little bit better. Yeah. And that's the car really that I started to fall in love with, sliding cars around. Mm. Um, and and then, it had that insane interior. Yeah, the full yeah, white yeah I know. When beautiful. I, yeah. It is beautiful. Yeah. Like, I, when I was watching your video and you did the specs of it and stuff, and I was like, oh, what a level. I know, That's yeah. naughty. Like, yeah, everyone asked me, like, don't your jeans just ruin it? <laughs> um, but thankfully, it had like this amazing wax on it that actually you just sort of wipe everything off. And oh, it's perfect. Cool. Yeah. So, and now I drive a C63, which I love. Um, but I've only had that for about a week, so can't love it that much. Yeah, and we <laughs> saw that at Doug Customs. Before we carry on, I'm just going to flick that screen around because I just remembered the camera does stop recording after a certain amount of time. Oh, yeah. So I have to yeah, keep yeah, popping yeah. up and, uh, and doing that. So as long as if we can just keep an eye on that. Do you know why it does that? No. It stops at 10 minutes, doesn't it? Is it 10 minutes? I think it? it's 10 minutes because otherwise you can't class it as a camera. Oh, because really? If it goes over, if it can record for longer than 10 minutes and it's like a video oh. camera or something like that. What I'll do then is I'll... We're going to have to have, unfortunately, the little breaks of me getting up and doing this because we are. That's like, fine. I do this so haggard. Like, we use just like one camera, one yeah. mic, and a dodgy old light over there that's like. That's better set up than my YouTube videos. <laughs> <I guess>. So, <laughs> so um, this is how we, we're trying to do this, and uh, it, eventually, I hope to be able to have like proper mic setups and yeah, stuff. But it's yeah. only if it works because I don't want to invest like five, six hundred pound in microphones course, and yeah. all that, and then build with build with the growth. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So if you can get your pals to subscribe, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So uh, I've been watching your YouTube videos a lot more recently, and I saw you were saying that. You were getting a Mercia Largo. Is that yeah. happening? Is that... I, I want that to happen. It's my dream car. It always has been my dream car. And I think that goes back to filming in London. Uh, it was the one car that just did it for me. You know you had that one car when you were a kid. Am I wrong in thinking that Lamborghini used to give a letter with the SV, SV one saying, if you kill yourself, it's not our fault? I, I mean, think I think that sounds like, pretty Lamborghini yeah. to me. They were just like, look, we've kind of built this car that's so reckless, you'll probably crash and die. So if you do, it's yours <laughs> yeah. and not, not our fault, sort of yeah. thing. Probably just to cover their own backs, because yeah. they Finn, are. Finn. Come on. It's enough. <laughs> it's enough. Yeah. Now look at him, standing proud. <laughs> He loves Australia. But yeah, you were saying you were, you yeah. were looking at them in London. Um, and, I, and I filmed so many of them in London, and my whole perception on cars was based on how they looked and how they sounded. And it still is my number one priority whenever I'm thinking about buying a car or driving a car, whatever it is, it's how they look, how they sound. It's as mm. simple as that. And I've been lucky enough to have some 
unbelievable cars that I never ever thought that I'd be in the driver's seat of and it still comes down to it doesn't have the same spark that the Mercialago gives me um, so it is still my number one car that I would like to own and it's one of the it's the car that I would buy and then keep forever and and just cherish and really look after it. You're going to tie it up by boring you. <laughs> so it would be a forever car then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. No, no, no. Come on. Stop being silly. Sit down. Sit down. Right. Yeah, cool, man. So we're looking around like, what's going on? If you want to get down, you can, but you can't get it up and down. All right. Okay, so. So the Mercy Lago would be a forever car. Yeah, it would. I just... I don't know what it is about that car, and I think everyone has that one car that they'd love to own. It's like a poster car, and for me, that was it. That was the Mercy Logo. Yeah. yeah, mine was the Dodge Viper. Oh, the GTS. The yeah, coupe. yeah. I think nice. I, I still to this day because I looked at them before I bought the M3. I was like, can I get one? Yeah. You know, I was like, because the M3 it's, it's a weekend car, so it's like, can I can I get one? Yeah. I know it's stupid, but what can would the I insurance get one? be on a Dodge Viper? I don't Viper? know, and I don't. But the thing is, like, it'd be. I think I'd be able to do it as a classic car. Okay. Because they're that old now, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. The one I like are that old. And um, classic cars with nothing. Yeah. So I was like, well, um, oh my god, dog. <laughs> it's gonna get down, man. Yeah. He's given up. He's like, this podcast such a cop boring. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. So yeah, like the, yeah. the Viper was my like, yeah, my forever car. Well, not my forever car, my dream car growing up. And uh, and it, oh my god, dog, you're just ruining everything. <laughs> so uh, what are you doing? Yeah, so that would be my yeah. the car so, that I always wanted growing up was the Viper, and it's, so, it's that. if that was yours, I completely understand that because even though it might, you know, it, it doesn't actually fit in well with your channel and all that sort of stuff as well. But yeah. if it's the car you want, then you got to get it. Like yeah. the M3 was on mine, the E92, yeah. I just yeah. thought it was the car, and I was that's like, incredible, such a cool car. Yeah, so uh, so that's that's rad. Um, we're, right, we're back. Yeah, we're back. So cheers, Finn. As you're a YouTuber, he's back as well. Oh, you Here he back comes. Hey, <laughs> he coming back up. What are you doing? <laughs> so we'll let him just wander around. Um, as being a YouTuber is your primary job. Yeah. That, like, you know, how did you start it all up and how did you go from, oh my God, I'm sorry. Oh, oh it's going <laughs> under the tripod. God, dog, you are ruining everything. Come on. Let me start that question again. Okay. Now the dog can't ruin everything. We're playing a bit footsie. Okay, so uh, with YouTube being your main your main job, your main yeah. priority in life when it, when it comes to money and that. Like, yeah. How did you start it up? At what point did you go from being like, okay, this is fun to, okay, this could be a, a career? I think the moment that I, the, I remember the news bulletin on BBC News and it was literally YouTube slash Google are going to start paying people to upload YouTube videos. And it was literally that first bit of news and I remember overhearing it, I was in the kitchen in my mum's house and going, oh, that'd be so cool. Because like, I'd had it a year on YouTube of uploading videos of me literally on a trampoline. I'm so about. sorry, man. <laughs> All right, hold that thought, you're on a trampoline. Yeah. Start again from that. How okay. did you begin your YouTube? So we can go um, from there. Yeah, the so I, the, my first channel that I set up was um, a channel where I basically used to jump off trampolines into bushes. Oh, that was literally as advanced as YouTube was back then. <laughs> literally, like you can see the evolution of a human from the ape. Like we were at the ape. Yeah. Like jumping into trees, fences, anything that I thought was quite funny. Jackass that, style. That was the content that I used to watch. Um, but then obviously I stumbled across this whole sort of supercar world in London and Knightsbridge and all of these fancy posh areas. And I was going up in Umbro trackies and a hoodie <laughs> and a, like this dodgy coat that was like five years old. And I was just paying for child tickets because I couldn't afford anything else, going up with my mobile phone and taking pictures and discovered this world of supercars. I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing ever. Like where normally you'd buy like nuts or zoo to see the latest car and things. I was seeing them in real life. I won't buy nuts and zoo for cars. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do what you mean. <laughs> yeah. um, and I ended up finding all of these cars, I was like, oh my God, like, this is so cool now. I'm seeing Ferraris and Lamborghinis, like, which I never got in Watford. Um, so I set a YouTube channel up with a friend of mine. We both co-ran it. And that's how Supercars of London was created. 31st of October, 2008. Um, and I just sort of- 10 years old this year. Yeah, um, which, is, which is nuts. Um, and so basically from there, about five or six years worth of that was just cars. I never put myself on camera. 
because I just was always scared of what my friends at school were going to think. <laughs> right. it literally, my friends at school didn't know that I used to go to London to film cars because I thought I was a nerd. I thought right. I was like this weird person. No <laughs> one else was doing it. You Literally, Sloan Street is Gucci. Like, all of these amazing fashion brands that like, I can't even name, like Marc Jacobs, all that lot. All down this one road, and you've got all these people like walking around in fur coats and Lamborghinis and Bentleys, and then like there's these two kids running up the road after a Ferrari <laughs> with their phone going, Come yeah. back! <laughs> um, and so, for the first five years, that's what happened. I went to university, I kind of grew up a little bit, and once I came out of university, I had adverts on my YouTube channel, and I had to apply. So I had to send Google a business plan of oh, wow. how many hours I was going to spend YouTubing, how much money I was going to invest in it, my targets, like my loves and everything like that, so that they could then sort of, I suppose, vet people on where the adverts sat on YouTube. Yeah. It was sort of really in the early days. And I came out of uni, I was like, I really want to try and create a sustainable income from this because this is what I love to do. So I spent six months every day in London just driving into London, because at that point I had my Voxel Astra, mm. um, and I just had content coming out of my ears. I just saw everything. Like, every single car was in London. It was over the summer where all the Arabs were in town, and it was just unbelievable, and I was like, this is what I want to do. I just love this so much. And then, over that year, I started to see YouTubers like Zoella and all of these people that were like vlogging from their bedroom, and I was just thinking, God, that's nuts I can't do that I need like a story yeah, yeah, yeah. to be able to tell to be able to do that and the first video that I shot when I was on camera was just this awful <laughs> TV style show and I just wanted to create a real Top Gear okay. because Top Gear you obviously see the cars drifting around all of the corners of the track but they've got unlimited fuel unlimited tyres they've got a team there to help if they've been a car or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just wanted to create a real life version of my insight into the cars and literally, I edited that video together. I was like, oh, I can't put that online. <laughs> I literally could not put that online. It was so scripted because I thought that I could like try and engineer some funny jokes of things that yeah, I thought yeah, about yeah. in cars, like how low is a Lamborghini? Like no one ever knew how low it was. Um, and all of that. I'm really stuff. sorry to stop you again. But the dog is doing my fucking nothing with that noise he's making. <laughs> What's he doing? He's I'm putting like a little treat thing down. Oh, and he's playing with it. He's playing with it, but he licks it. Finn. I hate the noise of licking. So if I keep <laughs> up the hallway, hey, come on, come do it up there. Oh, he's not going to. Oh. I sometimes feel sorry for how intelligent dogs are. See, if he's doing it out there, then he can just kind of wander back in. Oh, okay. Space. I thought you were going to lock him no, out no, there. Otherwise, like, he'll oh. scrape and scrape. <laughs> about that so we're back again that's cool see it's, the problem is working with live animals man like <laughs> he's back, he's in back already. already oh my god <laughs> please just bear with us one day i might be able to afford like a studio and we can do a v2 <laughs> of this and uh, ask more in depth with what are you doing now are you gonna chill out or what please come on come on come on right if i move this out of the way now so he can come and go if you want more water please just Perfect. shout yeah yeah, you want yeah. Some more water now? no 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 i'm good thank okay. you um so yeah um, so you were doing like a TV show style thing? Yeah, and it flopped. And then I thought, do you know what? Like, I want to know what it's like to buy a supercar and document the real life ownership of something like And at this like point that. you had the money from YouTube no, to afford to do it? Nothing. No, okay. I had no money. Um, and I decided that I was going to set my first supercar up. This was the the sort of thing that I pinned everything on, like it was a huge risk that I was going to announce to my audience that at some point I was going to buy a supercar. I had no idea how long it was going to take for any of this to happen. Um, and I, I contacted Premier Velocity, which is the car hire company, and I was like, look, can we do some cool videos? You get quite a lot of exposure out of it. I get to create the content. It was a win-win situation. I teamed up with them and every week I filmed a test drive from the passenger seat of what it was like to just sit in a car because I hadn't had that much experience as it was in a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. So just having that access to cars was a real eye-opener for me. Yeah. And at the time I had sort of social media consultancy little business that I tied in with YouTube as well. Poor little dog. He's an idiot, man. Um... <laughs> He's just cleaning his toenails now. Yeah, he's itching his ear. Yeah, you're, you're doing the... Um... <laughs> so, what I did was I teamed up with a bunch of different companies and I helped run their, their Twitter and Instagram, their business Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And that consumed a lot of my time. Uh, but it also 
um, earned me income on top of the YouTube revenue that I had. And people started to really buy into this series that had never been done before. Because I was like, whoa, like, if I could follow some of the supercar owners that are driving around in London when I was filming them, I'd love to see an insight into just what they get up yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and just having access into their life as such of what it's like to own a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. Mm. So that was what I wanted to do. I never wanted to create a Top Gear spec stat type real sort of factual show. I wanted to create something that was real something that was real life, but involves my passion, which was supercars, and something that I felt like I could talk about quite a lot. Um, and it got towards like, the end of my first supercar when I was kind of running out of all of these cars. I'm thinking, oh my God, like, I haven't got any money <laughs> at all. Um, and I managed to sell my Vauxhall Astra, which has since been written off, RIP. Oh. Um, <laughs> and with the help of the social media consultancy stuff and the companies that were involved, in, I, that I was involved with, they managed to support me alongside the YouTube revenue that I had to be able to get this Audi R8, right. which was just totally mental. And funnily enough, the one company that didn't benefit from it that I pitched to was the company that I bought it from. Oh, so really? they gave me a mini deal and I said, look, I'm doing YouTube, I'm going to document, and I think this is going to be quite a big video. Do you want to get involved in some form of promotion that we can work on a long-term thing? It was kind of a bit businessy. Yeah. Um, and they were like, look, we don't really know what that means. Yeah. So. <laughs> I guess that's fair enough, isn't yeah. it? With the YouTube, um, it is still at risk, I think, now. Yeah. Companies, even though you can see how successful you can be on it. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe like two years ago or whatever, that company kept, got back in touch. We're like, oh, we've seen you doing really well on YouTube. Like, can we work together? And can we do this? And I was yeah. like, we can, but like, let's see, let's see what Finn. we can do. <laughs> um, so that was really how... I got on the the sort of the bandwagon, or that's how I got on that ladder of of owning uh, a car like that. Um, and it really helped because I had stickers on the car, I had sponsorship on the car, which helped pay for the car. Yeah. And my, like I was skimp, like I could not afford the petrol in that car. That was why I got so in, infatuated by fuel economy and how good a supercar could be on fuel economy because no one ever sees that. Yeah, yeah. But really, I just couldn't afford the fuel to do it. So I was like, <laughs> I need to drive this really slow yeah. at low revs just to see how good the fuel economy is. But I then got really involved in that and I started playing games with myself about how little fuel that I could use yeah. just because I couldn't afford it. Yeah, um, I guess that's fair enough. Yeah, and then... I came to sell that car when I realized that I hadn't lost any money on it. It was still worth the same that I paid for it. And once I had sold that, I was like, right, like now I really need to get properly involved into the supercar world. And I made a jump that at the time I really couldn't do into getting into that Lamborghini. Like I definitely couldn't afford that. It was right. the biggest risk that I've ever taken. But I just remember like my lecturer's ears in my head going, you're not a businessman if you're not a risk taker. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, was like, I need to, I need to take this risk. I need to make this jump. And for like for the first couple of months or so, I couldn't afford the Lamborghini. And it was only that first month of YouTube AdSense, because the delay on it is 45 days or so, that I had to wait for the first month of AdSense to come in from the videos that I'd made on the Lamborghini to be able to pay for. For it. the Lamborghini. Yeah, right. so I had to wait like two months before I was like, oh my god, like I've just got no yeah. money whatsoever. And it was the scary. So people don't see that side of the struggle. Like they just see you buying the Lambo and they think, oh fuck it. Yeah. Out. Because I think, <laughs> I think because YouTube is a snippet into whatever you're filming that day, and during that time I was um, doing daily videos. Um, that's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, it's yeah, really no, annoying no. me. Like, I enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy having a little dog here. Okay, well, he's not that, that little my, anymore. He's not my sidekick, but yeah, <laughs> he's bigger than me when I'm sat down. <laughs> um, yeah, they see a little snippet in your life, and I was trying to explain that to people. Like, obviously, like that. That's where my experience comes in as well. Like, yeah, these are just like little windows into your life. It isn't mm. what you're doing every mm. day. Like, when I, I love having Zach, my friend, come yeah. and help me film now because yeah. it takes that a little bit of pressure off of me. Because I know he's good on the camera. I know he'll get me what I want. Yeah. And he doesn't mind if I go, Zach, I need you to do this. And he's yeah. like, oh yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like, oh, fucking hell, let me film yeah. it. So, oh, oh, good idea. You know. Yeah. Um, it's nice that you've found someone that has, shares the same passion yeah, as Well, you. we met through also, cars anyway. Yeah. So that's how but he's also as motivated as you. Yeah. Like, because you've, there are so many times where you could probably have 
uh, a guy that sort of helps you out with the camera stuff and you feel like it's a burden mm. that you're asking him like oh like could you mind if you just 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 film this, just this little bit like just just 10 seconds of your yeah, time yeah, like, yeah, and, yeah definitely and yeah if you're not trading on eggshells around someone you feel like you're both working together for the same goal then it massively helps well, I, don't, I don't know how he feels about it. Like when I'm, yeah, when I'm like, he might walk out that front door and be like, <gasps> yeah. But I know that he, he trusts me with the editing and the final yeah. result and yeah. the, you know and all that sort of stuff. And I think even if I might annoy him when I'm like, dude, I need you to get this shot, and he's like, oh, fucking all right. Yeah. He'll watch back and be like, all right, that was sick. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, all right, that yeah, was cool. Yeah, like, yeah. So I think he trusts me and I trust him. So it's kind of a good like mutual good, partnership. Yeah, exactly, so. For sure. Yeah, and the people don't. I think that's something that I wish there was more mm. coverage on. Yeah. Like, Fucking hell, this is hard work. Like, Do you know the, the maddest thing that I've discovered is when you want to try and document what is actually like behind the scenes and you upload a behind the scenes video, it's still an edited version of yeah, the yeah, behind yeah, the yeah, scenes. Yeah. You almost need <laughs> someone rolling a 24 hour camera yeah, the entire time. Just, just take that, that camera up there. That, live, there. that live streams the entire thing. That someone should live stream them editing a video. <laughs> it phones in for six hours. The like most this. boring video yeah. of all time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like this brings us to the point where I can ask you the main question that I wanted to ask you, which I did text you about as well. Mm -hmm. So you've kind of got a heads up on this. Yeah. But I don't know if I explained it well enough. Um, it's how the YouTube audience devalues the achievement of owning, you know, supercars or mm. spec up cars, and like yeah. how, like even with my recent experience with the M3, how, like how supportive people have been has been amazing. Mm. Like, I, I was very nervous about uploading that video because I was yeah. like, my it's audience, a big deal. Though. Yeah, like, like, it's a big deal in your life. Yeah, and you've bought something that you're sharing with your audience that have been following your journey. Um, and it's, it is such a nerve wracking moment when you're like, I've made this huge decision. Yeah, and it's for me. Like, that was yeah. the thing with the Beamer. Like, I even said in the video, like, this is not a project for the channel. This is not a car to impress anybody. Yeah. This is something that I've wanted for like, I don't even know how long, man. Like, it was when the E92 came out, I first saw yes. it, I was like, that is the car that I want. Like, yeah. that is beautiful. Like, yeah. I got to drive a bright yellow one, you know, the Dakar yes. edition one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I want this. Yeah. That was when it was brand new. I was like, I want this car. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. do I get one? Well, yeah eight years later or whatever it is, I've got one. Yeah. And I was like, I know my audience probably would just be like, I wish you'd spent the money doing the EG or the S15 making that. I'm like, but I didn't want to. Yeah. I didn't want to. I wanted to spend that money on that. So I just wanted like how it feels for yourself when you buy like a Lamborghini, like, you know, that next level of car, like that supercar. Yeah. Do you ever read the comments and like get that, or on Twitter or anything where they're just like, oh, you should have bought McLaren, or you should have, and you're just like, fucking hell, bruv, I've just bought a Lambo, mate, let me, let me enjoy this for a second, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, oh, just... no, I, I totally get it, and um, I think the most important thing that I've learned over the years, especially with how many different opinions there are on YouTube, is that the world would be such a boring place if everyone liked the same thing. Oh, a million. And that's as simple as it is. And the, the one th really interesting comment that I had on Twitter around my C63 is it's got a lot of chrome on the outside, which I don't like. I don't like chrome and neither do you. Um, and there was comments about, oh, you should leave the chrome. Like everyone does gloss black. Every, all of the YouTubes do, do gloss black. And that's not because we're copying everyone else because we're like, oh, he did a video on that. Like, I'm going to go and do a video on yeah. that. Like, it's my personal opinion. And like, if I didn't want to do it on my car, I wouldn't do it on my car. Um, and then I was just thinking, but can you imagine if everyone had chrome on their car driving down the road or if everyone didn't have chrome driving down the car like it's just that variation everyone's got different opinions everyone likes different things everyone dislikes different things but it's like i, I loved it in the video where you where is it tony and that were like yeah you've got to do the wheels gloss black and yeah. i was watching the video going don't do the wheels gloss black <laughs> yeah, yeah. i was literally going don't do that i think i even texted you, you like, dude please don't yeah. do the wheels gloss black they all look Rank like they'll just get lost in the car and like exactly when I picked the M3 up the shop that I bought it from like what are you gonna do to it because they know who I am yeah, and like, yeah, I do yeah. all my modifying they don't know me from YouTube they know me because of my cars yeah and they were like um, what are you gonna do to it then I was like first thing first port call is get rid of those black wheels <laughs> but they were like we'll buy them back off you I was like I can't sell them because the limited edition comes with the black bloody yeah. wheels <laughs> so I've got to put them in my garage with, like a thousand pounds out of wheels that I won't be able to sell because like if I ever do sell the car I want to go back to standard exactly so yeah. it's like oh it's so frustrating but. Going back to the point, like, do you do you personally feel like the achievement of owning the supercar and that uh, to me it is such a big thing? If I ever am in the position, like, I'd like to have one of those MP412Cs. Yeah, is it? yeah, yeah. I think the original ones. Yeah, like, yeah, th yeah. That's the one that 
in my heart of hearts, I'd like. I yeah. think it's the prettiest one. It's yeah. the one that I'm like, maybe I could afford that in five or six years yeah. when they've come down and my wage has gone up a bit. Yeah. And I just feel like if I bought that, I don't know if I'd want to post a video because someone would be like, oh, Shmee bought one of them 18 <laughs> years ago. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. well, fucking hell, I'm not him. Like, I think I, I, I don't know whether like, you get that sort of same sort of vibe. Do you feel like the ownership of a supercar gets almost like the fun taken out of it because you're... Obviously, you're in the position because you are because of the videos, but the videos almost draw that out of it as well. I, th I think it, I think it's quite fun because it definitely sh gives you that perspective of what other people are thinking, and it goes back to like Forza. Yeah, my garage looks completely different to someone else's garage because when they've earned that hundred grand bonus of doing loads of races, yeah, yeah, yeah. they go and buy a completely different car to what I'd buy, and it's exactly the same on YouTube. I think because YouTube has now become a lot bigger. And I think social media has advanced so much in over the last five years or so that we're just exposed to so much more stuff. So your audience watch you and collect your BMW M3 and they think that's awesome. But someone might also subscribe to Shmi and have watched him collect his Ferrari, McLaren, Porsche all in the mm. space of a month. And then when they come back to your channel in three years' time and you've got your 12C that's your pride and joy, they've already seen someone yeah. collect that car. Yeah. And that's what it is. I think social media has just opened the door to, for us to be exposed to so much that it's one of those things like you see someone collect, uh, I don't know, like a Bentley or something like that. And you're like, oh my God, like I would have had the Aston Martin. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you start yeah. doing it doing yourself. yourself. Yeah. But I'd never publicly go, God, Paul, you're a f***ing <laughs> You shouldn't have <laughs> yeah. got that handle. You should have got that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. buying 190 grand, I'd have done this. Well, yeah. I'm sure you would have done, pal, but calm down. Like, yeah. It's not your I'd, 190 I'm, grand. Like, I think, it's a, I think it's a load of fun. And you just still have to look at it as a percentage of that amount of comments that you get based around someone questioning your decision versus the amount of people that are supporting Support, you yeah. for your channel, your content and your decisions. Because at the end of the day, I'm buying the Mercedes C63 because I'm going to live with it. Mm. For every single day I drive that car and I bought it for my own personal reasons. It just so happens that it's like a pretty damn awesome car it's that I love. Car, yeah. um, that it's so cool that I'm able to share that side of my life with my audience. Yeah, brilliant. Well, it's nice to get your take on it, because obviously you live that supercar level, whereas like I just get like people are like, oh, you should use your Beamer more than your <laughs> Nissan. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you skip no, your yeah, Beamer but... again. Like, I don't want to skip the Beamer anymore. Like, it's that sort of like irritant for me. I'm just like, dude, like I'm making this like in my spare time. But I've got to get over that. I think because like, yeah. the amount of support I got on that M3 video was like mind blowing yeah. to me. Like, and you can see that as well because it's it's spread across to Instagram, and you can mm. see the amount of comments and likes that you're getting on those Definitely. pictures. And it, yeah. it and it's so cool to be able to share your love of cars and your passion with everyone else. And I mean, yeah, I I get it on all of my cars. Like I bought an Audi A1. And the first thing people are like, oh, you need to lower that, you need to tune that, you need to yeah. exhaust you need to do this, you need to do that. And I'm just like, whoa, this is my, this is my car that I drive every day. Yeah. And I got it with the BMW M3 as well. You should lower that, you should slam it, you should put it to the ground. And then I'm like, well, then I can't go over speed bumps. Yeah. And I drive this every day. Yeah. So it is one of those things that if you can like just maintain your composure as you're looking through the comments, then like... I can't. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'm just like, right, let's put that down. For yeah, oh, yeah there's, there's a hell of a lot of comments out there that you're just like, whoa, yeah. that was personal. <laughs> yeah. but... Ouch, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I do know what you mean, man. I do know what you mean. Like, so I'm, I'm glad that we got that. That, that was like the main, I think that's probably what I'm going to title the video. Okay, um, cool. Because yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a, a question that I was just like, I've got to ask. Yeah, yeah. For someone that was, what, like, obviously I aspire to get to that point. Um, whether it's through YouTube or anything. I told you what my YouTube dream yeah, was with the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the V-Suit. Like that's, that's, that's that is incredible. the dream. So yeah. like, I don't think I'd ever end up buying a supercar just from YouTube unless I become like Jake Paul or some shit. Yeah. I don't know if I want to become that. No, I'm, not, no, to be no, honest, no, so. I'm not sure you want to have that life, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, cool. Um, before we get into the main subject okay. of yourself and the drifting, yeah. um, I just want to ask a couple more questions about the uh, about your YouTube and mm -hmm. the supercar side of things Absolutely. because that intrigues me so much because yeah. it's like the dog oh, man. <laughs> right, we're back. We're back in action. Oh. Dogs like getting patted on the head like this, don't they? Most of them, anyway. Most of the ones I've met. <laughs> he seems to like it. He'll tell you if he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how long I can do this for. Right. So where <laughs> were we at? Um, who was the first big manufacturer to get on board with you and your YouTube? To uh, believe in you and go, we would like to yeah. either give you money or give you this platform to come and do a rad video and it drive was, wild cars. It was actually a real 
cliche story from the growth from zero subscribers to 100,000 subscribers, which took about six years. Wow, okay. And then the following three months was I went from 100,000 to 200,000. Like, oh, it was that blimey. mental, the growth. I, I kept getting told from people that knew YouTube that were like, YouTube um, MCNs, like um, advertisement things that are, most of them are all a scam. Um, they said, brands will only see you when you hit 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> hold, oh, you're holding my hand now. <laughs> um, he wanted my hand. That's what he wanted. Yeah, he wanted to keep patting him. <laughs> Finn, oh! come on. No, no. <laughs> That's the wrong type of tube you're looking for, Finn. Come on. <laughs> um, but it was literally like they were saying, oh, I think he does. He likes me. <laughs> there we go. Um, when you hit 100,000, brands will recognize you. And I was like, oh, cool, whatever. I yeah, didn't care yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah. I did YouTube because I loved it. And for the first two years, three years, like I didn't have ads on it. Like, because you couldn't get ads on it. Um, and I only do it because I enjoy doing it. And as soon as I stop enjoying it, then I'll just be like, well, I'm just going to get a job then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and literally, I hit like 100,000. And two days later, I got an email from Ford inviting me to Detroit to go to the Do Detroit Motor Show. Wow. And it was the show. Finn! Finn, come on, come on now, come on. Don't act like all innocent, like you're doing nothing. Look how big you are. You idiot, man. Sit down. Do you reckon he thinks I'm a female dog? No, I think he likes <laughs> big men. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, and like I'd never been abroad, like paid for by. A and they brand pay for everything. Did they? they pay for the flights. They pay for the hotel, and wow. they like put on this incredible four days. And I flew out to Detroit, and I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. It was minus 20, so that was probably why I was thinking, what the hell is going on? <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, oh my God, like this is just insane, incredible that I've just got this flight paid for, and I'm staying in a hotel. And so that was the first brand that kind of was like, okay, this guy in the car world is making videos and has got an audience, and they listen, and they watch, and they engage. That, are, that they were like, okay, cool. And Ford have always been a supporter of Supercars of London, which is, which is really cool. And I've done loads of cool stuff with them. And they always look after me and anyone else that is involved incredibly well. Um, Non-manufacturer, the first brand that got in touch with me uh, was Shell. And I did something, and I did a video with Shell that was the first time that I'd ever worked with. A brand, um, and it was a proper eye-opening experience to be able to. They put on an entire day, like incredible catering. They had this assault course, and we had a BMW X6 that we were able to drive and do the assault course with. And we got timed, and there was like proper celebrities there. Awesome. It was like Fifth Gear, Sky Sports presenters. Like I was just like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> like, these, and they're normal people as well. They're not 2D on a TV. Yeah, like, yeah, I was yeah. proper starstruck by all of that, um, and I just couldn't believe that that opportunity had come from me being in London filming cars. Mm. And to think to where it is now, it's, um, it's, it is mind blowing. It's mind blowing. And I, every day, like, I'm just like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, what? Do you still wake up feeling that now? Yeah, yeah. Like, I think, just, I think, because I live, breathe, I don't even know what, what, like, live and breathing is kind of the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. But I, like, I literally, like, everything that I do is either social media based, car related. It never feels like work because I yeah, enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, And that's by far the coolest thing, which is why I say, like, if I ever was to not enjoy it, enjoy it and wake up in the morning and go, oh man, I've, I've got to do this today, like, then I would be like, right, I need to pack this in. Yeah, no, that's fair enough, man. It's fair enough for sure. So, recently you've announced you're going to yeah. be. Learning to drift. I know. <laughs> it's like, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, it's obviously something that's been in the works behind the scenes for quite a long time, but just to be able to announce it publicly, get the weight off my shoulders, but also get it out there. Mm. Because, like, the week building up to this all happening, like, there seemed to be loads of drift news or drift videos. I was like, whoa, like, everyone's just going to do it before me. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. though I've been working hard like to get everything in place, get organising various things, because the one thing that I learned last year when I announced that I needed to sell my Lamborghini to buy a, an apartment um, was 
sort of, I was like, right, then I'm going to film what it's like to buy a first property because mm -hmm. I hadn't ever seen that on the internet before and I'd have loved to. But everything fell through from the show home viewings to the non-show home viewings to the accountant meetings, the solicitor meetings, the estate, everything. Mm -hmm. and it was such a boring and stressful process. It's horrible. But yeah. I thought that I could film it. And then when I didn't and that whole thing fell through and my content kind of fell apart, I knew that for the drift stuff, I had to have things in place. So I've been working behind the scenes with some really cool people, some really helpful people. And I feel like this is like a proper community of people that really want to help, that are passionate about it. Mm. And that's why I'm so excited to get involved with it because it kind of, it ties in nicely with the supercars because one day I'd like to take a, the latest Ferrari and do like a Jim Carner style video with it mm. and really show the behind the scenes that when you get it wrong, because that's one thing that like the likes of Ken Block doesn't do. Like all you ever see is this incredibly beautiful video, but like hundreds of skid marks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> of when he's been practicing. Yeah, have you seen that one? Well, obviously you would have done, but the bit where he puts that fiesta almost in the sea. Yeah. I'm curious to how many of them went in the sea. <laughs> because like, I keep thinking like, how close did that actually get to going down? Like, yeah, yeah. like when I'm watching that, I'm like, man, that looks so gangster. Yeah. But like, how how close did he genuinely get to? How many Fords are in the sea? How many Fiestas <laughs> are probably worth seven hundred thousand pound a piece yeah. in that water? I know. <laughs> yeah, man. I I think it's really exciting for yourself. Um, however, regardless of however you, your audience ever see it, I think you're probably going to have the most fun year of your life. I think you'll meet Definitely. some of the most insanely talented but amazingly cool people ever. I think one thing that always amazes me about the pro drifters as well, as you'll meet with Peden, like, there's only maybe, how, how many do I know that are just pure drifters? Bagsy, he's a drifter. Yeah. So Bagsy, absolutely lovely man, yeah. like, as well, like, very talented driver. Yeah. Um, really nice, and I think that is all, like, his main income yeah. is drifting. Okay. Uh, sorry, battery just died. <laughs> <laughs> we now need the a better setup than this. Struggles of um, production. <laughs> So yeah, there's only a few drifters that I know for sure are drifters as a, dr a living. A lot yeah. of them will be pro drifters on the weekend, yeah. and they will be nine to five, a banker yeah. or, or a shop assistant, or you know, like me, I'm a car part sales guy. Yeah, like, yeah. if I could go pro drift, I probably would, just yeah. because it'd probably be the most amazing thing ever. It's but the coolest life, it's the coolest way of driving. Finn, Finn, <laughs> bruv, come here, come here. He, he does look a bit sad now. Drifting, 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 drifting. Drifting, So what we was, where were we at? Yeah, we were uh, saying. Bagsy. Talking about Bagsy. Bagsy. Uh, well, we, yeah, Bagsy. Yeah. We'll start again from like, yeah, you're going to have probably the most insanely fun year of your entire life. And I mean that, I think, because the supercars and that are wonderful. Yeah. They are, like, you can't get away from that. But the Nissan, like, you know, we were driving around in the M3 and it's yeah, all yeah, like, yeah. I know it's not supercar, but it's a rad car. Yeah, it's it? wicked. Driving around like, yeah, the M3, like, right, now we're going to get in the fun car. And yeah, you were like, yeah. the fun car. Yeah, just it's surely the M3 is yeah. the fun car, but yeah. it's true. Yeah, like the clanky diff, the bright purple paint, that yeah. everyone looking at you going, that guy's definitely doing something naughty. <laughs> you know, just doing 30 mile an hour, sat yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, he's definitely about to do something naughty, yeah. and like, than he normally do. And yeah. it's fun anyway, because they're yeah. like, well, we expected that guy to do it. Like, <laughs> so um, I think you're going to have a great time. So. I need to ask the questions about it. Like, Go on. where are you? Where are you starting out? You're gonna. Get, you told me you're going with Pro Drift Academy. Yes. Peter Nilsson. Yes. Amazing man. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. It's like, I'm like, so excited. I'd like to, to think it. that he's like my now adopted older brother. Okay, cool. So like, I think he's amazing. And he's yeah. an amazing man. He's hilarious. He's the best. Yeah. Peter's the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, then where are you gonna go from there? Like, so are you gonna get in touch with your manufacturers and say like. Are we going to sort out a drift car or are you going to buy a scruffy Nissan and go from there? Honestly, or? could go one of two ways. Okay. Um, I don't think I would complain either way. I think I'd probably have more fun if I went and bought my own car and started to build it up from the ground. And I think a lot of people... I don't think you even need to build up the ground because there's so many drifters that are broke. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> so that's one thing you'll learn. Like, that, that a drift car will drain every ounce of yeah, yeah, enthusiasm yeah. Like, and yeah. money. But, but that's what makes us car so, guys, right? A hundred percent. So like a lot of the cars you might find, they're ready to go. Yeah. There'll be a there'll be an S14 with a body kit and a diff yeah, on, yeah. and then you can just kind of go, Do you know what? I'm gonna get my boys to wrap it, yeah, and we'll start from yeah. there. Yeah, um, I'm, t I'm like I'm so up for that, and I think it is just trying to fit those pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together into yeah, just so that it makes like a fun journey, but also gives me the opportunity of getting the maximum seat time as possible mm -hmm. because. I don't come from a background of 
car enthusiasts. My mum and dad aren't big into cars. My brother's not that fussed about cars. So I'm not like other people that might have like done a bit of karting when they were younger. Yeah, yeah. Or Mate, spent time on the track. Neither am I. So I do feel like I'm kind of a bit of a blank canvas, which I'm hoping is quite a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but I'm fully aware that like I properly need to have seat time. Mm -hmm because I am taking this seriously, I don't want to just be, do it as a bit of a gimmick. Yep. Like I'm taking this properly seriously. So I think if I can somehow engineer it so that I can have my car that is a bit of a project car, it might not work all of the time, but that's part of the fun. Yep, 100%. But have whatever it is, someone supplying me with a car that I can just jump in and drift mm -hmm. is the best of both worlds. From what I've learned from drifting is that any little change to the car, and this might just be me being the type of driver I am. Difference. Oh my goodness! Me. Really? So like, I changed top tires on the front of the car. I went from having I can't even remember what they were. They were pretty good, but I'd never used them before. Um, for what I got on the car, but after like the first few drift days, I was like, I need. Basically, a company got in touch with me, and I've never had companies get in touch with me. And it was um, what brand were they called? Fuck, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, they're not paying. Yeah, they're not paying. Anymore. <laughs> they're not giving me another set of fuck. So uh, no, they gave me this set of tires, and I was like, they were like, which ones do you want? So I, I was like, oh, I'll have these, and um, I wanted them for the drift day. I got them, and I this is where my naivety come in. I had got two sticky tires for the rear, so I went to a drift day, and I was doing grip driving all day. I was like, I can't get the back end out. My car's not powerful enough. Yeah. So what I did is I burnt through them best I could, just like to burn out. So yeah, I ended up yeah. ruining the car because of it. Um, but it's right, we got it all fixed up. And I just chucked some cheap Chinese Mohawk tyres, whatever they are, on the rear, and I've yeah. got the good ones on the front. Yeah. Oh my god, man. Any little change you do to it, and then going back to my BMW again, it was like, I've got to learn to drive all over yeah. again. Yeah. So I feel like if you really are taking it seriously, you need to get one car yeah. that okay. that's the car yeah. you use. And See, then, this, is, this, is, this is all good knowledge yeah. for me because I have no idea. So let's say Mercedes were like, fuck it, we're getting behind you, and we're going to build you another C63 drift car, or whatever they're going to do, you know, whoever Mercedes, it might be. If you're watching this, yeah, like, but you know, I'm like, down for that, and give him one as well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if they would like that, then what they're going to do, they're going to put a sequential box in it because you're not going to want to flap it. Yeah. Because yeah. you have to let go of that wheel. Like yeah. you throw it in and you let go, and then you you're, that's how you're controlling yeah, it. So you're yeah. not going to want to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm thinking that maybe even if you, I, I, I think Sylvia's are brilliant. If mm. you can get a, a Sylvia that works, <laughs> you have to dig through the pile or find one. They are like some car, man. Yeah. Like, just, no, it was, it was just, so much fun going out in your car, and I real like I got proper sense. Like I felt like I was in Japan. Yeah. And I felt like I was in Fast and Furious about yeah. to do some wicked stunts. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I love about it. Yeah, and I really feel like. From my, don't take my word as gospel. T you should talk, talk to everybody. Mm. But you'll notice Peden will have his 180SX. Yeah. And that'll be the car that he drives every event. Yeah. Um, the Shanahans, who are the pair of brothers that are amazing mm. in Ireland. Yeah. Well, Jack's getting a new car. I don't know if I can actually say what it is because okay. they did mention it. But for previously, he drove an S14 and okay. his brother's got an S13. Yeah. Sylvia's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James Dean just won Formula Drift with an S15. Okay. Sylvia, by yeah. mine. Well, obviously, it's way better, but like, yeah. the, uh, the way Monkey London sold it to me, who I also feel like you should do a video with, is um, yeah. he sold it to me like, there is a reason why James Dean uses an S15. Yeah. That's literally what he said, because he's got an S15 okay, as well. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I think oh, I've seen his on YouTube as well. Monkey London, yeah, black yeah, one. Yeah. It's normally on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he's getting, yeah. he's getting it fixed. But, like, that, that's just my advice as like a grassroots drifter. Find a car that you love. Even if you were to go to sponsors and be like, this is what I'm able to do and this is my journey. This is the, the views and the coverage you're going to get. Yeah. I need the money to buy the car. Yeah. You know, I want the money to buy the car and then I honestly think you'll get that Mercy Largo and you'll be like, I'm going to take Sylvia out. <laughs> yeah, probably. Just, I'm, I'm, it's a Sunday. This is going to work more than the Mercy <laughs> yeah, Largo. Like, oh. <laughs> this could be a good video series. What's more unreliable? <laughs> an SR20 or a Mercy Largo V12? That would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, I think um, I think you've got a long path ahead, but it's one of the, probably the most enjoyable you'll ever yeah. walk. Um, I can speak on my own behalf on this, that mm. it was the most fun year of my life. And it's the little victories in it mm. that are the ones that mattered the most. So I, I really struggled drifting around a cone. And that's the most basic thing ever. And I do Just doing like a circle around Donuts it. around a cone. Oh, okay. I was terrible. <laughs> Figure of eight, I was terrible. And I'm thinking, I'm filming all this, I'm putting it on YouTube. Do you know what I mean? That was what yeah. was going through my head. And then I was like, the guy I was, who was helping me, he was like, go out in the kidney bean and see how you got on with that. What's a kidney bean? Right, so a kidney bean is like, you know, like the shape like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah. I went out in that, and obviously then you got to start linking it up. And I, yeah. I kept spinning out here, but I was like, oh, well, 
I can do, this is more enjoyable. And I said to him after that, he was like, are you going to go on the big track? I was like, I'm scared. Yeah. I was like, I'm happy to admit I'm terrified right mm. now. Like, I'm shaking. He was like, just go out. Let everybody else go in front of you. They'll understand that you to stay away because you're new. Just go out. And I was like, all right. So we we're waving people forward. And then I realised everybody in that line was as nervous as me. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> yeah. we're all going to die. <laughs> Everyone was just lined up yeah. going, no, you, no go. you go, you go. You and go. I was like, you go! Yeah. Pop it in reverse and go back. <laughs> and then I ended up doing like, three, like, a, like a few hours on the outer, outer track. Mm. And like for me, I can equate it when I skateboarded. That was like going to the skate park and dropping on the six foot ramp and being like, oh my god. You know, <laughs> that was that like. And I, I'm really excited for you. Yeah. Because when you were like, I'm going to get into drifting, I was like, he's about to. I even think I treated treat it. I was like, yes, finally, you're yeah. going to love something. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just the most like. I've driven all around the country on my own to go to these events in my van and my trailer car. Yeah. I'm just like, yep, I'm going 11 and a half <laughs> hours up to Driftland now, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know any of these guys I'm going <laughs> to drive with, but it'll be yeah. fine. You get there and you just go around, shake people's hands. I normally find stuff on their cars I like. I don't lie. I wouldn't go up to a car I don't like and be like, oh, yeah, this is sick. And I'd probably yeah, be like, yeah. I'd go up, look around the car and be like, man, I fucking love your body kit. Oh, damn, yeah. the colour is sick. You know? yeah. Try and like create a bit of a bond with people over the cars themselves and then go from there. And then normally they'll be like, when you're entering the corner, you're going in too early. And I'm like, right, okay, do you mind if I follow you and just watch you go in? And I'll just do a sighting lap and yeah. follow them. And then I'm like, right, that's where I need to enter this yeah. time. And like um, I did explain about the Street Track Life Day, that's the best two days of my calendar. And Ali invites me and I go, I will be there. Yeah. Mum, I need you to have the dog these days. Like, there's no <laughs> arguments about that. Finn, so you uh, come second best to that debate. To, to Street Track Life, you have to go on your own little holiday, don't you think? <laughs> But um, it, I think you're going to love it. I do. And I, uh, I, yeah. In my opinion, I believe you should get a car. Mm -hmm. And that's just for me. Even if it's a 350Z. Yeah. Because like, even though they're thin, they're not like the coolest scene car or whatever. They're very reliable. They sound incredible. Yeah, they sound and they drift really well. Yeah. And you'll probably learn in one of those. Okay. That's probably what they'll put you in at the Pro Drift Academy. Okay. Um, they're great. They're great beginner's cars. And they're almost like what the E36 was. So like they're a great beginner's car, and then you can go right. I want a 500 brake horsepower Skyline to do yeah. this in now, or I want a BMW E46 M3 to do <laughs> yeah. this in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I think if you watch some of the old Japanese videos on YouTube, which is what I did before I knew anything about drifting, and I'd been to a few events, I was like, sorry, I'm just going to watch the older B2 events and the old D, the old G, the, the D1 GPs and stuff. And I was yeah. like, I'm just going to watch it and just see if I like it, because that's where you'll kind of gauge. Like, you won't understand a word they're saying, <laughs> yeah. but you'll just watch these guys wrecking these oh, Japanese it's... cars, and you're like, whoa! I think, again, like that goes back to the social media and the exposure that mm. you have, like with people sick, picking up supercars and collecting them and stuff, but you have access to something that you might not have had 10 years ago, because oh, yeah. it would have been on Japanese TV. You wouldn't a lot of people would have used DVDs like this, actually. I've got one over here. I bought these when I was in Japan. Um, the auction DVDs. So these are oh, old, like one's actually when it was in England in 2006. Oh wow. Um, and then the other one's like from there. So I've got these that I chuck on and yeah, have yeah. on in the background when I'm doing stuff. Just oh, because, that's so cool. Yeah, so um, that's the sort of stuff. I picked them up in Japan, 25p each. <laughs> in a shop <laughs> in Japan. I'm like, can't knock that at all. Yeah. But I, I'm really that's excited so cool, for you yeah. and I hope your audience gets behind you with it as well. And even if they don't at the beginning, because mine didn't. <laughs> like I had some that were like really supportive, but um, a lot of people were very anti-drifting, just want Hondas, which I think you're going to get with, they just want the supercars. Yeah. Stick with it. Be real passionate about it. Be like, this yeah. is, I'm loving this. Yeah. And I think people will relate to it like, Maybe I want to give that a go. Yeah. And the more people we can get into drifting, the yeah, better it will be in yeah. England because there'll be more drift days, there'll be more tracks being like. Because we know, I know for like how some of the tracks, they say like there's a lot of like arrogance about it. Like, so the motorbike track riders and the car track drivers will be like, can't we stop the drifters from coming because they keep ruining the track? And the track will just reply, the drifters are the ones that paid to come the most. <laughs> you know, we yeah. make the most money out of the drift days. Yeah. So, no, yeah. <laughs> they're coming back. So if we can get more drift days up, and it means that we're not all sat online like, oh my god, am I going to get a ticket? Because like, rocking them in the summer, you, you have a 10 second period really? where the tickets are there, and then they're gone. So like, it is like, yeah. we have to get on this. And I really feel like the Matsuri, I'm going to give Matsuri a plug because I will be there. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> I've heard all about it. I haven't shut up about it really. It <laughs> is like, I'm going to send you a couple of links to mine and Monkey London's videos from yes. last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are, it's just the, that is the festival. So they have night drift, team drift in. So you'll watch oh. the teams going around at night yeah. and you'll watch the girl at team. Night. Yeah, the girl team who are better than everyone. Can't everybody. even do it in a day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, you'll love it, man. And yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for you yeah. for this. No, I, I feel yeah. like you get to, Everybody thinks supercars are the pinnacle of cars, mm. don't they? They're like, yeah, I want it, yeah. my dream is a Lamborghini, but then yeah. you go, 
that's affordable, and I could have a go. And, and all yeah. I've got to do is go and But like, you can you can guarantee that someone that has only owned Audi R8s or whatever and driven them on the road has never had as much fun as someone that's done a drift day or, or got a drift I, car I, they take to drift Yeah, to I mean, the, the one for me is the Sultan, and I don't know what Arab nation he is, but he is obsessed with drifting now. Yeah. Lunatics by nature are all like the super rich Arab guys yeah. are... That's lunatic by nature, and they're all sponsored by Monster now. They're all pro drifters now. They've just gone fuck it. We've got LaFerraris and Enzos, yeah, yeah. but my S15 with a V8, I'm gonna drive that. Yeah, yeah. Like that's and, why and I'm excited about weirdly, it. Weirdly, uh, we I did a trip to Abu. No, it was to du to Dubai a couple of years ago, and it could well be this guy mm -hmm. because we did we sort of jumped on the back of a convoy. We weren't okay. in, we weren't in a Ferrari. We were in a Cadillac, I think. We were right, in, and we were doing this Ferrari owners club drive that ended up in this compound of a palace right it was unbelievable and this guy had a, a, a like it was like a palace and you walk in it's his garage right it's not <laughs> even his house right and he's got veyrons he's got two la ferrari he's got all of the ferraris he had a lamborghini reventon he had a mclaren p1 he had like 25 cars like pristine looking like it was in a museum it had a bowling alley in it it was like his man cave and outside the back he had a drift track and he had two drift cars there and he turned up in his Bugatti Veyron, got out of the car, welcomed everyone and then all of a sudden we're walking around going, oh look at that LaFerrari, like dribble coming out of our mouths. And then you just hear, brr, 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 brr. Yeah. we're like, what's going on out there? And like literally I ran outside just to see what was going on. It was, he was just practicing his drift. Yeah. I was like, I want to watch this. Yeah. This static cars are boring. Yeah. And and I think it is just I I I I don't want to like try and take it away from them, but I genuinely feel like there'll be a point where you're just kind of you'll be walking around one of these supercar shows that you've always been excited about, and you'll just be like, Can you drift that one? Like, that, it's not even that. You'd be like, Do you know what? If that was an old S14, I could hop in there and I could have it backwards <laughs> against the wall. Do you know what I mean? It was Driftland that changed me because when I went up there, because before Driftland, like all the other tracks are good, but they're all very safe. Yeah. At Driftland, my first three laps, I think it was, I followed another S15 up a bank, and his aero just, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm in the deep end here, boy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I was yeah. going around, and that, like I said, that morning I sucked, and I was giving myself such a hard time. I, I started to get the hang of it, and then I lost my bumper, and I was like, right, fuck it, let's just do this. Yeah. I've got this car for drifting. If I wreck it, we'll fix it. Yeah. That's what I got in my head. If I wreck it, I'll fix it. We'll drift again. Yeah. And just out. Just and yeah. that's it. And yeah. this is the most exhilarating feeling when you're chucking the car in and you're chasing somebody and you're getting closer to them and you're getting closer <laughs> yeah. and you're just like, oh, this is sick. Yeah, yeah. This it's, is sick. It is an adrenaline rush that I really haven't experienced that much. Mm. But the times that I have, the brake attraction, living a little bit on the edge, out of Feel control. Feel that brake attraction. In control. Remember that brake attraction? Yeah. And then imagine looking over like that and there's another yeah. car there. Yeah. And you're like, what's up? We might die right now. Like, uh, uh, my favourite video I've done is one where Mo my friend Morgan came drifting with me. And he's, he's done drifting before. He'd come drifting with me before. I got him a lesson drifting as well. So he can start to get the hang of it. Because he's got the same car as me. He's got a okay. silver as well. Yeah. It's a really nice white spec car. And, um, Sounds like everyone's got silvers. Are there any for sale? Uh, there are a few. But <laughs> price of the car. Oh, God. Um, so, uh, yeah, he come drifting. And there's a bit in the video where I'm putting it against the wall. And I must be like this close. And you can hear him go... <laughs> and it's just that in the video, it's just that. And this is why I love filming the videos, because a lot of people think you pretend you do it well. I do it for the memories. Yeah, like, I'll have yeah. that on camera. I can show my kids and be like, look what I scared your Uncle Morgan with. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I might be old and decrepit now, I used to be yeah. alright or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, I'm excited, so, yeah. man. No, it's going to be it's gonna be so much fun, but like, I'm, I'm probably taking it seriously, because mm. whilst I don't want to completely narrow my tunnel vision to just becoming a professional drifter, I think it is such a good skill to have of incredible car control that you can take anywhere. Mm. I think once and you've got that, you'll be able, and if you do like the reviews for, let's say Ferrari, and they let you on a track, you'll be able to be like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like yeah. how well, do you turn the track off? Yeah, you know, like, I probably week, shouldn't, yeah. but fuck it. I never been to Ferrari on a track. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the press drive. Did you? Yeah. Which one was it? 812 Super Fast. Oh, really? Yeah, it's in one of my videos, but I'd never put it in the actual video because I was scared of what Ferrari were going to think. And then I actually slipped it into a video at the end of the year so that people might miss it because it's such a short clip, but I'm doing about 80 miles an hour. And I was like, let's see what happens when you turn traction control off. I just went around this corner and I was just like, left, right. <laughs> Tank slap wrong, oh, and it was yeah, it was.
pretty scary because the barriers were right there. Mm. Um, but hopefully, like in let's say six months, twelve months, or whatever, it's just in addition to the content that I got with the cars that I'm already sure. driving, I think as well it. as doing the storyline of trying to become a professional drifter. I, I think you'll love it. I think the drift community will love it because the drifters just love drifting. Yeah, that, that, that's what I've learned. Drifters yeah. just love drift. They don't care who you are. They don't care yeah. what car you've got. That's wicked. If we go out skidding, yeah. we'll yeah. go out skidding. Yeah. yeah, I think it shows it because it snowed the other day. Well, we're all there, and we're all just like, can we can we still go out? And they're like. <laughs> Right. Yeah, if you want. Yeah, well, yeah we do want, we yeah. want to. Like, it's coming down thick and everyone's still like, whoa, 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 I was looking at those kids, yeah. Like that was it, like yeah. it was just brilliant. Oh and, uh, man, it's gonna be so much fun. I think, you, I can't wait for you. I'm very, very yeah. excited for you, man. So back to some questions. Go on. We'll go back in, uh, I think we've covered that really well, I think. Um, yeah. This kind of goes on. This is obviously, that drifting was obviously a choice for you. Mm. That wasn't consulting your audience or anything, which yeah. I think is good. I think yeah. that you have to have that. Before we do that, I'm just gonna restart. Just pop them. Okay. There you go. So yeah, that the drifting is obviously for you and mm -hmm. not uh, consulted your audience. Like, do you guys mind if I? And I like that because I believe YouTube is for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have an audience. But yes. Hopefully, your audience like you enough to just go. You know, I like Paul. I'm going to watch whatever he does. Mm. You know, if some people are only there for the supercars. Fair mm -hmm. enough. But yeah. Do you feel like when you buy cars, it, or previously when you bought cars, you've had to justify the reason for buying that car, or have you always just bought them because that's the one you wanted? Um. I think, yeah, I think it is purely because it's the car that I've wanted. That's good. Um, I think that's a good reason to do it. It might not necessarily be the exact car that I want, mainly down to either I can't go into the dealership and spec one up brand new mm -hmm. and then lose 20, 30 grand on the depreciation of it. Um, the only times that I've done videos like why I bought mm -hmm. whatever car I bought is either I had a number of cars in the running for it and I left it right down to the last minute that I revealed what car that I'd bought. Yep. And then I kind of felt like I probably should justify why I've bought that car yep. against the other cars. Because Which I think it's a fair reason. Yeah, because well, yeah. the comments would have been like, oh, I would have bought that car, or I would have bought that car. And then it comes down to, personally, the pros and the cons of every single car. What ticks what boxes for me? What makes my heart pump yeah, faster? Yeah, yeah. And that was the main reason why I ever did why I bought that car mm -hmm. and it came down to just purely because it was the style of video that I was creating a little bit of a surprise a little bit of a mystery of what car that I'd bought um, and then it comes down to I probably should say well I've bought it then I think that's a fair <laughs> enough reason yeah. um cool man yeah the car history is always now cool. I believe you are at fault for spawning this whole genre of YouTube videos do you Me? know what's coming the McDonald's drive-thru, <laughs> that Everyone does them now. What I made know. you decide to go, do you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna take a car for a McDonald's drive-thru. Because you do McDonald's roulette, don't you? Yeah. Which is a weird thing ever. I, when I watched that, I was like, okay. what? Like, yeah. So, I feel like I have to ask you on behalf of like the other people the, that are like me, like, what? <laughs> everyone in the, that is fed up with the idiots <laughs> taking cars through McDonald's drive throughs And, okay, when I bought the Audi R8, I still had in my head that my core point of the channel and videos that I created was I wanted to document the reality of owning the cars. Okay. So I bought the Audi R8 and I immediately launched a series which was living with and I wanted to do a doc, uh, like a like a YouTube series of what it was like to actually live with an Audi R8 because no one had ever documented that in the past. Mm -hmm. All the content was that was out there was either a drive-by of an Audi R8, which I probably filmed in London, mm -hmm. or a TV advert that you saw of Audi going, this is the slowest car yeah, we've yeah, ever yeah. built, and all that crap. And Top Gear and Fifth Gear did fantastic jobs of reviewing the cars, but what I wanted to do was put them in real life situations that normal people do and see how it handled. Mm -hmm. And the idea of doing a McDonald's drive through was purely because I thought I was gonna curb a wheel through the tightness of it. Okay. And I was like, it's, it's pretty punchy to do that with a car that I've just bought and I don't yeah, know yeah. how wide it is, but who has seen an Audi R8 or any supercar do a McDonald's drive -thru? Because they are so popular, their videos. Well, I- Aren't they? I, I know. It's I look at them, I'm like, you've done this like really nice like day of a GTR or something like that on a, yeah. you know, a test review, and then you get like, a, you put a, on that McDonald's and, and it's like a yeah. billion views. Like, I know, it is, it's- People it's, would rather click on that than this, and I just it's, think it's amazing. It's, I, I, I honestly, I don't, I think there's a, obviously the air of mystery with the McDonald's roulette that I'm almost certain I saw on YouTube before I did it first, but I can't remember the channel, otherwise I'd be like, yeah. it's inspired by this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm all about crediting yeah, yeah, where the sources come from. And 
I, the only thing that I can remember is watching a French prankster do McDonald's drive throughs and I think that's where I got the idea that I wanted to take supercars through the drive throughs yeah. um, But the R8, I can't even remember like, what happened on the Audi, Audi one, but I remember what happened in the Lamborghini one. I, I realised I didn't have cup holders. And I right, got like okay. two or three drinks or something like that and I just freaked out that I just bought this Lamborghini that I couldn't afford and I had drinks just balancing on my hand. <laughs> oh, what am I doing with this? Yeah. Um, and I, and I think it was just where I got my passion and saw that there was this opportunity of filming cars and bringing them to life rather than seeing them on television or in magazines. I was bringing them to life and seeing them in real life scenarios of stuck in traffic in London. Then when I had my own car, I wanted to put it into the real world that people wouldn't necessarily have seen them in. Mm -hmm. So I was then even bringing them more to life or more real where I just saw them driving from, with someone else driving. I then brought them even more closer to what I did, like when I had my Vox Lastra. Like everyone does McDonald's drive throughs it's just such a normal thing to do, but yeah. it's very rare that you would see it in a very expensive no, no. car. Oh, there we go, um, There's, that's that answer. Yeah. I had to ask, because I was it's, just like, I don't know why you do that. I, do you know what I mean? like, but at least they know it's, now, it's, it's to put in a supercar in a real in, life situation. Exactly. Where yeah, I took the R8 to the gym, I took it to all sorts of things. I mean, I did a video of like me kicking a bunch of gym balls around the gym when I took the Audi R8 to that. I think I went at about 12 o'clock at night. Right. So there was no one else in the gym so I could get away with filming it because otherwise it'd look a bit weird going into yeah, the gym with sure. a camera. I always oh, thought, like, yeah, yeah I, I, I always thought, because obviously I've told you I'm trying to lose weight and that, and I was like, maybe I should start vlogging my, like, on my second channel, like yeah. my weight loss, because it would be cool for me and the motivation for me. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I've got the bottle. I don't know if I've got the yeah. bottle to take that camera in the gym and be like, well, I'm fat at the minute and I'm lifting like one kg weight, but it's, yeah, look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just don't know if I can do that. Nice. Nah, so. it, is, it is definitely a barrier that I don't think I could overcome taking a camera into the gym. Yeah. If you're training with a partner, then you might get away with doing some iPhone shots and be like, right, can you just quickly film yeah. this set like that and then go like that. But it is, it is such a sensitive thing when you're just walking around in public with a camera, you never know yeah. who's going to be there. And, and I've heard the weirdest and wackiest stories about people in the background of a video and coming up and being like, well, I've actually got a, like, you have to pay to put me in the video because I've got like whatever it is and stuff like that. And, and it's, <laughs> it is mental, but yeah. it's... If you want good gym videos, Fabian Bellard, one of my friends, yeah. makes okay. very good gym videos. Yeah, yeah. Right. I need to check it out. I think we're okay. Sorry, yeah, yeah, six yeah. minutes in. Yeah, cool. Um, how do you maintain a normal life alongside running such a big YouTube channel where you're not just vlogging, you are out? You know, like you were like, where were you last? Sedonia, did you say, or some uh, shit? No, uh, Corsica in Sweden. Corsica in Sweden. And where are you this week? Slovakia. See, like, that's not normal, yeah. man. Like, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, not. No. You've, got, you've got a girlfriend, you've bought a flat together. Yeah. Like, you are like in real life, as well as this like insane YouTube career that you have. Yeah. How do you maintain it? Like, how do you, like, how, how yeah. the fuck? Because like, I struggle with a dog, man, let alone a girl. Oh, I'm pretty sure she'd pull hang me out the dark to drive. Yeah. Uh, I think it, it definitely comes down to like my girlfriend being so supportive of everything that I do. She understands it. I've been with her for nearly six years now. She was with me before I had a Twitter and Instagram account and she's watched the entire growth. So it definitely helps that she's supportive and understanding of everything that I do because I am on my phone 98% of the time. Mm. And I think the only, the two percent is when I'm at dinner because she really kicks off when I'm, when I'm on my phone at dinner. Um, but. It, it is mad, and I think to know that I, I mean, but I used to spend all of my time in London filming as well. Like, I just seem to work out the balance, and oh my god, like, I've got it wrong so many times when I've worked <laughs> overworked myself, I've nearly burnt myself out, I'm getting two hours sleep. But honestly, from the moment that I've come out of university, I have more often than not done over 12 hour days. And that might not necessarily be hardcore editing or filming, but even just sitting on my phone and flicking through Twitter and having a, getting back to notifications or doing emails yeah, or whatever yeah. it is, it is just constant. Mm -hmm. But it comes down to the fact that this is my passion. This is what I enjoy. So it never feels like work. Yeah. And I really had a struggle of trying to flick that word from being like, I'm going to film cars or I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that to be like, oh, I need to do work now. Yeah. And I still don't. It's other people around me that say, are you working today? Be like, oh, not really. And yeah. like, what are you doing then? I'd be like, oh, I'm actually filming a Mercedes do this and, and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't feel like work. And I think that there's no way of escaping that actually I do work seven days a week and I do tend to do over 10 hours, whether it be editing, filming, or whatever. It is completely non stop. And if I'm on a flight, I'll be editing on the flight. 
Um, and I mean, the, the prime example was something that I did with Michelin, where I went out to LA and they put on this incredible itinerary. Like it was unbelievable, but it was 6 a.m. till 11 p.m. at night. And then at 11 p.m. night, everyone um, goes back to the bar and everyone has a few drinks. And literally, I was up until one o'clock and then I was editing from one till three from what I'd shot that day because I felt rude about saying to everyone else that I need to go and edit. And then I was up at 6 a.m. And so I was running off three hours yeah. sleep for about a week. And I don't really know what the formula is other than if you're passionate about something and you enjoy doing it, then you kind of feel like you can do as much as you possible. You make time to do it. Exactly. Yeah, and sure. you do as much as physically possible. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, the, uh, halfway through 2017, like I nearly burnt myself out and for about two weeks I was like, I'm never uploading a video again. Like, I never want to do YouTube again. And it was just an un... You sleep just make an annoying whistle yeah. noise right next to the fucking microphone. <laughs> um, so there's been ups and downs. And I think this journey has been completely mental. And I can't really believe what has happened when you start looking back on the YouTube video and go, oh my God, I did that. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. The highs are incredibly high and the lows are incredibly low. Yeah. Um, so it is just a complete balancing act and a lot of fun. Excellent. Excellent. That's mm. a really interesting answer. Yeah. Cool. I've just got to find a bird that will accept me that I'm going to be on my phone all the time. Yeah, Brilliant. Yeah. Never going to happen. I'll be alone forever. <laughs> <laughs> so my final question that I've got written down yeah. is uh, what is your favourite experience you've had as a YouTuber? Oh. Favourite experience as a YouTuber? I would... And it can't be the, the Nissan today. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually convert that to experiences because it's plural, it's multiple. And it is, it just is, no matter where I go, wherever I take my camera, the people that I meet that are car fans, that are petrol heads, that I can end up having a 10, 15 minute conversation with, wherever I am, mm -hmm. is just the coolest thing about it, the most humbling thing about it. But I just love going anywhere and just chatting cars. Yeah. I just... I don't want to escape the car yeah, community, yeah, yeah. Um, which is why like, I'm so excited for the drifting stuff because I just feel like it's going to get 10, 20 times I better. One thing that I've just been thinking about for you with this drifting is that the fact that you haven't even seen some of these cars that exist yet. No. Like no. the Chaser, you were like, what is that? And yeah. Like, the, when you see a barge that big with 500 brake horsepower throwing itself at a wall, you're going to be like, I can't believe people do this. And you'll go and be like, oh, have you got another car? And you'll be like, no. <laughs> yeah, that's my, I'm this is my daily. This. Yeah, it's my daily. Yeah, I'll drive home in this. I'll, yeah. I'll take it to work tomorrow. And you're like, you are fucking mental. Like, I'm very lucky with, that we have the van and I have a daily car. So like, I nick the van on the week. I have to check with my brother because we share it. Yeah. So like, if he's not got a delivery, then I can take the van. Mm. And like, I think that's the one thing that will really surprise you. And I'm really excited for you because I've had, like I said, the most amazing year learning a drift. I mean, yeah, I, I think because I discovered the supercars when I did and, and realised that they existed in real life and Jesus Christ, like seeing an Aston Martin drive down the road, I was like, my jaw was on the floor and I knew that I had to document it, it was in some form to show my mm -hmm. friends. Um, but I can imagine because my passion for cars has stemmed from video games, it stemmed from the Fast and Furious movies and all sorts of stuff, that if I discovered that scene before the supercars, You'd my be life would have been completely, or my journey yeah. would have been completely different. And who knows what would have happened, but the fact that I'm now being able to revisit that mm. um, and sort of start the new journey is like seriously exciting, seriously yeah. exciting. I think you'll have enough people in the drift community that want to get on board as well, because like we said, we need as much exposure for it. I'm, um, I'm, all, I'm all for that. Like yeah. I just, I just really want definitely to get in touch with Jake. Yeah, 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 yeah. I promised him I'd yeah, say I'm, that. I'd say I told you, Jake. Where's <laughs> my <laughs> hookup now? Where's I'm, my hookup? No, he looked after me. When I've I still got his email. I just need to <laughs> yeah. email him. Drop him so. an email and say yeah. like, can we come up and do some big fat smoking yes. skids? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Uh, shall we take a pause real quick and I'll ask some questions on the Q and A, or should we call it? Because yeah. it's ten past four. Ten past four. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's. Why don't we? Why don't we do it? If we can get like some cool questions in, then we'll do it. Maybe like yeah, um, yeah. All right, so right, pause. Yeah, we're good. We are good, Mr. Wallace. Excellent. Right, I've posted on my Instagram. It's a weird time of the day. Though. It's four o'clock on a Monday, so it's like not when everyone's on their phones. We've got some questions. So we have got some questions. Right, let's. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to ask stupid questions. Okay. 
Um, you I'd can rather, ask him if you want. Because <laughs> uh, you know, obviously I come from the Honda background, a lot of people are like, when's she going to buy a Honda? You know, so that's just a general question that okay. everyone gets a million yeah. times. Um, I'm going to ask one... Okay, I think this is a pretty good question from another YouTuber, yep. Painos TV. Okay. Um, how do you think the YouTube scene would have changed in five years' time? Because obviously you've been around for a long time on it, so you've seen it evolve. Yeah. It has definitely evolved like quite considerably in the last two years, probably more so than in the, la the, the eight years before that, because I feel like the content's improved. I feel like there are creators out there now that are producing as good as television style documentaries mm -hmm. as vlogs. Yep. Like, and it's just ridiculous. It's setting the bar to a new level. And I think YouTube have got quite a lot of plans to try and rival the likes of Netflix, mm -hmm. which um, is good and bad because they're obviously going after where the paycheck lies. But at the same time, they need to also consider the creators and also the smaller creators that I saw, was it a couple of weeks ago or last week? We have about to over 10,000, is it, ten, no, is it, I can't remember, 4,000 video views a minute, like minute views or something yeah. like that to be able to qualify um, or something? So I feel like they're almost going backwards in the way that the monetization works, because at the beginning, obviously, I had to set a business plan. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's gonna feel a little bit more high end than it might do at the moment because the quality is only going to get better. The technology and cameras is only going to become better, which means that the sort of products are going to become a lot more accessible. So a camera now that might cost five grand that's used in television, the technology is going to be in the 500 quid cameras. So everyone's going to be able to use yeah. them. So like what we're seeing on Instagram, everyone uploading DSLR pictures. And then when someone uploads an iPhone picture, go, what is that on a potato? <laughs> like, I think that the quality is only going to get better, which, I suppose this is an exciting thing because it's a challenge to everyone. Um, and I think a lot more people, especially in the car world, are going to start taking slightly different directions. I think right now there is a lot of content that's duplicate and it's a real struggle that we all face in terms of trying to create different stuff. Like I had a tweet today that was like, uh, your Jaguar E-Pace was actually pretty bad because it didn't feature anything to do with the car, no interior shots and no stats. But I was with Sam all day and that's what he filmed. Right, so we're yeah. not going to duplicate the same content. Well, it's like I said to you earlier, didn't I, about yeah. the camera. Let's it's, not film the same thing, otherwise we've got the same video. Yeah, like. it's, it's, it's pointless. So I think as long as creators work together and collaborate and work and actually put effort into their content, then yeah, it's, it's only going to get better, mm. which is an exciting thing. And hopefully YouTube really starts seeing the importance of the community because that's what it was right from the word go. And now I feel like that they're having a real sort of sticky situation with advertisers and the way that they see YouTube and the way that they perceive YouTube. It didn't help that extremist videos went on. Yeah. Other videos with ads and things like that. And I think that's what they're trying to hide. I still don't moment. fully believe that. What? That, that I don't believe that the oh, extremist that, videos that had ads on. Yeah. Because I, I think that was just like, because who's going to argue with that? Who's going to yeah. go, ah! Yeah. Because they've kind of gone, fuck, we fucked up putting PewDiePie on the spot. Yeah. We need to, There's so we need something to quickly blame. You know, yeah. oh, it was the fucking ISIS. Yeah. You know, uh, well, hang on a minute. A, yeah. Like, then they show like, oh, Jimmy Kimmel's talking about war and stuff. And he gets yeah. advertised. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, I, I don't I believe it. I, I don't buy it. I, I just kind of go, you're talking can, shit. They control it and yeah. they do put wool over our eyes sometimes. But um, I think in five years' time, who knows? I'd, I'd like, I'd like to see if if they're going backwards with the monetization. Yes, it might be difficult for the smaller guys to get monetization, which obviously it supports them creating the content, but hopefully to the right people that are in it for the right reason, it's gonna motivate them even more. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing, because yeah. if you get motivation from setbacks, then that's how you're gonna get Definitely. success. Definitely. So hopefully they go backwards and make it a bit more of a community. I hope that too. I think today is quite a big day in the terms of UK car YouTube that you've come to me. Yeah, and I'm just I saying because you are much more established than I am. I have a very small following in the grand scheme of things, but you've gone, I don't care about views and stuff. Let's just hang out. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, sound. Like, I want to film a podcast. Yeah, let's film yeah. a fucking podcast. Yeah. I'll take, take me out in your Sylvia. Let's see what it's like. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, hopefully we get like other, the bigger YouTubers wanting to cross over with other, the smaller YouTubers. And like, for sure. Because it's like in America, their YouTubes are massive, aren't they? Yeah. Like, if we can get that same sort of thing here and we can all create beautiful it, stuff like, for everybody then it works yeah it? like i the way that i sort of see my channel and, and the numbers that are associated to it 
is it's just a number on a screen. Mm -hmm. Like whilst I absolutely love being able to create content for my subscribers and wouldn't be in the position that I am without them and I think that the support that they provide to Supercars of London is amazing and the community is is like nothing I've ever experienced or never thought that I would experience. At the same time, like we're all car guys. I don't see someone that watches my videos, someone that I wouldn't talk to you if you didn't have 100,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah, of course. Like, I can have a chat with anyone about cars. Um, and I think there are a lot of big guys out there with millions of subscribers and things like that. And again, like, I just think it would be boring if you were just that one guy that had like PewDiePie like, with 50 million subscribers or whatever, he's on something ridiculous like that and no one else is anywhere near him. Like, yeah. It must be quite boring <laughs> to just be like, oh, like, no. Like, nearly at 60 million now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But then have that mentality of I've got 60 million followers, if I collaborate with someone that's got 25,000 subscribers, I'm not going to benefit from it. Like, it just shouldn't be like that. No, no, no. It's, cool. Everyone is just like a person that has interests and opinions and I don't necessarily think that numbers need to get in the way of that. Yeah, I agree. So there's a guy called Matt the Gin. Hang on, let me read his username out. <laughs> Matt Mitch dot the Gin underscore seventy three has asked okay. possible Liberty Walk kit for the Mercy Largo. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Um, I think this is definitely one of the most asked questions about the cars that I own is Are you going to Liberty Walk it? Because I feel like people have got they're holding all of their hopes on. A wide body kit going on one of my cars. Can you imagine Sam from Seeing Through Glass putting li <laughs> a Liberty Walk on his Ferrari or Tim putting a Liberty Walk on one of his cars? So I if Sam did that, I think I'd explode. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people would explode. Um, I probably wouldn't do it on the Mercy Largo because whilst it is a very, very cool modification to do, it does take away quite a lot of usability and that car starts with very minimal usability as it is. So to make it even worse to drive, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think I could do it. I probably should have done it on the Hurricane. I wouldn't do it. No. My reason in it, not that I don't like Liberty Walk, Yeah. but I mean I love Liberty Walk, I love Liberty Walk Europe, the guys yeah. that run it are amazing guys, mm. they're fantastic, but I personally don't like the body kits. Okay. Yeah, um, they are out there, and, and, and they're not made in a wind tunnel. I also believe that they're a fad. Okay, yeah. so I think right now, big bolt-on kits are the popular. They are for sure. Popular you go to, thing. I went to SEMA, and everything was white everything body was kit. like like two three years ago when I went to SEMA, everything was GTA six everything. Yeah, and like they have these like little fads, and I think there'll be a lot of pe very rich people cutting up their very expensive cars <laughs> yeah. to be the hot shit now. Yeah, in three or four years, people will be like, "Well, I've seen it done a billion times." Yeah. Now uh, what? Yeah. You know, cars on their roofs with wheels upside. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. but like that's one thing I think. I think they'll be in and out right now. Uh, okay. Geo has sent me a question. My friend Geo okay. has uh, sent me a question. Uh, Snog Mario Void, <laughs> Arch Hammer and Scene Through Glass and TG. <laughs> we'll finish on this question, okay. Gio. You got the last one in. Um, Snog Mary Avoid. Arch Hammer and Scene Through Glass and. TGE. Okay, I'd avoid Archie. Because <laughs> he's an annoying pest. Um, I think I think I would, only because that's the last thing that I'd have. I've done so many road trips with Sam. I've done so many things. We've shared cars, we've shared hotel rooms, as weird as that sounds. Um, but like I explained to you off camera, when you you really get a sense of a friendship when you have to do a road trip with someone because mm. you're in their personal space 24 seven. And I've done enough road trips with Sam that we don't get pissed off with each other. And I think it is a real test of a friendship when you have to spend 10 yeah. hours in a car with each other for four days in a row. Like it's not like a little hour around the M25 and be like, oh thank God I'm out. Like I just need to go to the toilet and have my own personal space. So I'd probably marry Sam and then I'd probably Snog that TGE, <laughs> that <laughs> which wouldn't beard. it wouldn't be pleasant. But the reason why I'd probably say that with TGE and why I'm left with the avoid of Archie Hamilton is that <laughs> TGE is absolutely hilarious. He's exactly the same on camera as he is off camera, if not l like less filtered off camera. Right. Okay. Um, and I've recently just spent the weekend with him, and honestly, I spent ninety percent of the time that I was with him tears running down my face of just laughing so much. And that's cool. Um, so, I, yeah, hilarious question. I wish I had questions like that yeah. on my Q&A. <laughs> I get amazing questions and like, I end up 
picking very sensible ones. Yeah, so yeah, I've yeah. absolutely loved. Like, well, just... I feel like we've done a very sensible podcast. Yeah, we've gone in depth for a lot of stuff. So I wanted to end on a bit of a joke because ninety-five percent of the other questions are asking when are you going to buy a Honda, <laughs> yeah. and I can't. I don't know. I just can't ask. I, that did, question, I, did, so. I did like the new Civic Type R that I had, and I was supposed to have the new NSX. Uh, last week. Oh, really? Uh, but I got bummed down the queue because Top Gear needed one. So, cool. Oh. <laughs> so, oh, I'm now getting geez. one in April. Oh, but. cool. Well, I look forward to hearing <laughs> yeah. about that because uh, the NSX is a sexual car. Yeah. Anyway, dude, yeah. thank you so much for no, coming on. Thank you. Um, thank it's you guys so. so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed to Supercars of London. His link will be down below. Thank you. I'm sure you probably do already, but it doesn't hurt to double check. Yeah, well, um, I'm sure the vlogs from our day have already come out from this, no? Yes, this is going to come out much later on. Yeah, okay. a few weeks, definitely, because I've got another podcast podcast to drop just before so oh, okay. yeah the vlogs will have been out hopefully you'll have enjoyed those yes and you have now enjoyed this little in-depth yeah. pool so and no doubt there'll be much more content to come from both of us fingers crossed man stuff. I hope we get to work together yeah, yeah, on yeah. The no, we need to road trip up to Scotland we need to road trip up to Scotland yeah I'll be in the drift land I can't drive into Sylvia all the way up <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the comfort of my transit let's land. tell your drift car my Merchilago <laughs> oh my god imagine how cool that I don't even be. have a Merchilago wrap it the same <laughs> why are we talking about it wrap it the same colour as my Sylvia <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've liked the insight into Paul. I hope you've uh, liked the questions I've asked. That's been good. It's I'm been trying so to, much fun. Trying to really get the podcast on point. Nah, so it's good fun. Make sure you hit subscribe to me. Make sure you hit subscribe to him. And we'll see you again another time. Thank Peace. You. Cool. Sick. Dude, thank you, man. That no, was good fun. <sighs>